and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him. Everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. Father, we ask that you pour forth your, your spirit on this room. Make your presence known, Lord. Reveal yourself in your word. Teach us the power of the living word which we are given by you entrusted to your church, the word through which we are able to discern your will, but also the places in our hearts which still need your freedom, Lord. May your word always be our sure hope and our love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, one on two. Is that cool? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I can do things. So the Bible. All right. I have like thirty minutes to talk about the whole Bible. All right. This is gonna be awesome. So just. It's going to be good, it's going to be fun, it's going to be kind of geeky. It's going to be all those things. I'm geeky, I love the Bible. So, there are two ways to read the Bible. Okay? And, like, don't worry, you can't see the screens. Like, oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll pick some readings too. But, one way is like the way that I want all of you to read the Bible, which is the devotional way. I want you to pray. Jesus wants you to pray with his holy scriptures. Because just like we have a body and a soul, the scriptures have a body and a soul. What you see in front of you on the table is kind of the body. But when you read it and you pray with it, you break it open, you enter into it, oh, you will encounter the soul. And you will feel the Lord. And you let him in, you meditate on that word, you change your life. That's what I want. The second way to read it is kind of the way that, you know, some scholars read it who have like zero faith, okay? Now, when Catholics study the Bible using like proper principles given to us by the Titus 2000 year tradition of the church, it's awesome. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about the second one, uh, but we're always going to live that first, that first way. So, I want you to turn to the groups in your tables, and you have two minutes. I want you to answer these two questions, okay? What is, what is it? What is the Bible? Question two is, where did it come from? Right, two minutes. You can share your answers. Uh, what is the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Just like when you meet someone, you know, you're not just meeting a body. When you, you see someone, you know certain things about them, you get to know them, you encounter their soul. 
So I use the analogy. It's not a separation. We're body and soul by one. Yeah. So, we want to answer the question? Where do those come from? Ten minutes. Okay. 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 Word of God. Do you have a different answer? No, not really. We just no. agreed that at the very beginning of the Bible itself, um, it said uh, in the beginning was the Word. Amen. Okay, and the Word was God. Amen. So therefore, even though it comes through men, right. um, the Word is actually God. So. Amen. Beautiful. That's right back. So, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 16. All scripture is inspired by God, right? The word inspired literally in the Greek means God breathed. In the beginning, God breathed the word. Creation. All things were created through him. Breathes. Inspired. So it is the word of God is mystically Christ. And so that's kind of what I talked about. Kind of the soul of the Bible, right? The encountering of Jesus and the word of God. So yes, it's inspired. We're also talking about like where like the physical copies of each of the books came from, when they came from, what time? Very, very briefly. This is very fascinating. No one's ever thought about like, is it like one guy wrote it and just like passed it on and they all like looked at the copies? Oh, yeah. It's, it's complicated. A lot of people are very smart and very holy that we have the church to tell us it's going to be okay, which is very important. Uh, but let's begin with one of those apologetic things, right? How many books are there in the Bible? <coughs> All right, Catholic books. How many are there? Seventy-three. Seventy-three. <laughs> what about like? No, nah, there's no like. There's like different variants of it, but generally, what would you say of like not Catholic books? Sixty-six. There, there are a couple missing from there, right? So you got fancy function on this thing. It's called laser pointer. Yes, <laughs> right there. So these are the seven books. They're not found in many Protestant Bibles. And when I was with my Southern Baptist pastor friend, who was actually the one who got me back into my faith, one of the critiques he always had about the Catholic churches, well, you guys added books to the Bible. And I was so confused. I'd never heard that before. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. How can you add a book to the Bible? I had, I had no, no sense of that. But the question is, did the Catholic Church add books to the Bible? That's what a lot of them are saying out there. I don't think people think through too much about the question. They just assume that the Catholic Church is through some extra books in there to justify Catholic teaching. But let's talk about like the where the Bible came from part, okay? All right, this is, this is me being super geeky, all right? This is called Codex Vaticanus. It is one of the earliest Greek manuscripts that is the closest thing to the whole Bible. Right? Early Greek, early church fathers, in the year 380. <clears throat> this is early. This is also one of the most reliable texts that we use when we look at scripture today to talk about variants in the text that we have. Like, why is this there? Should this little section be in there? It's not in all of the manuscripts. Well, it's in Codex Vaticanus. It must be real inspired. But the reason I show it to you is the little pink ones, like Wisdom, Sirach, Baruch, those are the ones in the Catholic Bible. 300 AD. Hey, look at that. They're in there. Huh. That's pretty early. Alright, the next one. Anybody know St. Augustine? That name sound familiar? St. Augustine wrote a book on Christian doctrine, on teaching. He was a rhetorician, by teaching. He was a teacher. And so when he's teaching scripture, he's like, yeah, I have to let you guys know like what books are part of the canon of scripture. Like, and he put them in there. Hey, look at that! 397 AD. They're all in there. Wisdom, Sirach, Tobit, Judith, and Maccabees, yeah, Maccabees. So, yeah, it's super geeky, you know, it's awesome. So, it's just like, it's just really cool. Like this, like many of these books have just been canon. 
These are the books that the churches all over the world, where this gospel was spread, were using and were bringing. All right, let's go to the Luther Bible. They didn't have to call it that, but they called it the Luther Bible. When Martin Luther came around, there was a lot of like underlying currents in the church of like distrustful theology, um, looking back at prior manuscripts. But this is in the year 1534. That is 1,200 years after those manuscripts I just showed you. And Luther had disputes with the teaching, the Christian the Catholic doctrine on justification with faith and with works. Like, could we, we struggle with that. And the doctrine of purgatory. He didn't like this. Couldn't reconcile that. So very like loosely looking back at prior manuscripts, he said, well, those ones were like, we don't have to put them in the Bible. There's like weird theology in there. They must not be inspired. So this is the like, first time you see all those books not in the Bible. Then... What is that? 40, 34, 46. 12 years later, this is what they talk about. This is called the Council of Trent. Council of Trent is a church in the binding and loosing authority given by Jesus declared what the books officially are in the canon of the Bible. The reason they did that, people get hung up on that. Like, how can people do that? The, the only reason the Catholic Church had this council to tell us which books are in the Bible is because Luther brought it up. He disputed it. Until that point, we never had to talk about which books were in the Bible. That was just, those were just the books we always prayed. And so there we go. This is the official Council of Trent declared. And we'll talk about magisterial teaching in another day section, but these are just the books that have always been in the canon. So it was a very geeky way of explaining. I hope that was somewhat interesting to you. It's super awesome to me. Um, well, this is another question. The Bible alone. Who's heard that before? All you really need is the Bible, right? You don't really need anything else. Three pillars in the Catechism. Divine Revelation, Scripture, Tradition, and then Magisterium. So apostolic Tradition, Magisterium. I'm not going to talk about those. There are two things that are not part of the Bible alone. This is one of the three pillars. But many times it's quoted from, um, well, actually, I take that back. In response to this, this is an interesting counter argument. In Acts of the Apostles, St. Paul says these words. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Okay? He said, Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Okay? What did Jesus say that? It's not in the Gospels! St. Paul! How could you? <laughs> Jesus didn't say that. There's no record of him saying that. How could you say that Jesus said that? It's interesting. Pew! Oh, God. So, at the end of the Gospel of John, John says, this ends his Gospel with this. Beautiful theology. And he ends with this. But there are also many other things which Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose the whole world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Beautiful. Like how much Jesus taught us and gave us. So, St. Paul received what's called oral tradition. Passed down these teachings. St. Paul heard this and is like, This is what Jesus said. We don't get it from the Gospels, but we know Jesus said it because St. Paul is saying Jesus said it. This is an interesting example of both things happening, right? It's divine revelation because it's in the Bible, it's not in the Gospel, but it's in the letter of St. Paul, it's in the Acts of the Apostles. But it's also oral tradition because where St. Paul got it from wasn't from the text. It was from the apostles who told him the things Jesus said. Very fascinating. I found that, I found that interesting. It's like a unique argument, unique way to address it. And so now imagine St. Paul goes to his Christian community and then he's telling them the things Jesus said. 
And then the apostles who went out to the whole world started their churches in different continents. St. Thomas came to India, my ancestors started the church there. And they shared the apostolic tradition with them, and they ordained men priests. Is that in the Bible? No, but it's given to us through apostolic tradition, or even St. Paul. So, a little, little argument for, for where this came from. But you also read this. I guess this is the many of my many of my Protestant brothers and sisters will use this text from Timothy. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching. Um, so he's telling Timothy, scripture is inspired, you should use it. But in the beginning, he also says this interesting thing, before he talks about scripture. Let's talk up here. Paul's telling Timothy, who's like a spiritual son, he's like, I'm going to die. Like, I finished the race. I've done this. I'm now commissioning you to carry on my ministry, because I'm, I'm done. And it says scripture, but at the beginning it says, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it. What's a whom refer to? St. Paul. St. Paul. You learned from me, your spiritual father. Do the things, share the things I taught you to do. And, in the red, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with scripture. Do what I told you to do, what I have shared with you, and the scriptures. Pretty cool. Okay. Awesome. I need two volunteers. I have one question. Uh, oh, your question. Yeah, my question is, why all the time you are associating the celebration of the story and how Jesus was baptized to go up. Why not Afghanistan? To go up? Yeah, you know, Oh, yeah, yeah, because, well, you're right, because, I mean, well, that St. Francis Xavier came to go up. It was much later, right? So Thomas the Apostle came to India. We, have, we don't have a ton of evidence about what he did there. But the gospel was evangelized by disciples of the disciples of the disciples. So he we went to Afghanistan. There are Christians in Afghanistan. There are Christians in Goa. There are Christians in Pakistan and in India and in Iran, Iraq, that whole Middle East area, the whole Southern Asia. So, so if the question is why not? Because yeah. they are there. They're just different, different missionary disciples who went out to different places. Um, but I still need two volunteers. <laughs> Don't worry, this is easy. I'm not gonna ask you to I'm not gonna ask you to answer any questions. I need you to hold something for me. That's it. Okay. We got two. All right. Thank hey, hey. you. Bowl. Bowl. All right. I got, I got some, some fun toys to play with today. All right. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to come out. Here we go. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can hold this open. Oh, cool. It's all good. Awesome. All right. This is amazing! <laughs> I'm so geeky. This is the world history chart using the Bible. Okay? Adam and Eve. <coughs> Abel, sorry, because he died, so no need. But came what Adam and Eve, Seth, Enos, and then my other one, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Noah. Shem, his son, all the way down. Terah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 sons going from Levi, Levi, tribe from Levi, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, took them into the promised land, all the way down, following the generations to the promised land. They wanted a king, Saul, David, Solomon, breaking away, splitting up the kingdom to Judah and Israel. All the prophets and the kings who came after them, Jujuju, all the way Israelite, the exiled and by Arminians, exiled by Babylonians, Jesus. Wait a minute. He's in the middle. He's not up here. He's down there. This is, okay, this is very geeky. So it doesn't just tell you the Bible, it also tells you what was happening in China, Japan, Indo German territories, Persia, Greece, and Rome all at this time. 
So cool. Okay. Here, Christ grown. Following this, Adrian, Nicholas, John, John the Twelve. Wait a minute. Sylvester the Second, Clement the Second, Nicholas. This sounds like popes. Oh, wait a minute. Adrian the Fourth, Alexander the Third, Innocent the Fourth. Pope Francis. Whoa! And this is really cool. <laughs> 2021. Joe Biden, 46th president of the United States. <laughs> Incredible. This thing's beautiful. And the reason I share this to you is because, like, this is Bible. Right? This is the church alive in the Holy Spirit. Right? This is salvation history. 